You reign in majesty. You are God, awesome God. You are the King of all the earth, awesome God. Oh, Jehovah, who is there like you, my God? You reign all over the earth. Jehovah, Jehovah, no one else like you. Come on, church. Awesome God. Oh, you are holy. Glorious. You are faithful. Your mercy is in your hearts. Jehovah, no one else like you. Come on. Awesome God. Lord, I worship. I worship you. You are God. You are God. You are God. Come on. You reign in majesty. You are God. You are God. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, minister to your people on this morning. Bring encouragement. Bring a word of direction. Bring a word of clarity into their situation. The Apostle Peter said, desire the sincere milk of the word of God that we might grow by it. As we teach the word of God to your people, help the word to be so simple that even a child can comprehend what the Holy Ghost is saying to the church. Strengthen, encourage, and uplift your people this morning, I pray. In Jesus' name, someone say a good amen. So, good morning to you, my brothers and sisters in the Lord. I'm talking about provision released after obedience. You know, sometimes we want we want the opposite to happen. We want the breakthrough to come, and then we say, God, if you do this, I'll do that. <laughs> it normally don't work that way. Amen? I said it normally don't work that way. Sometimes God have to test us. He have to try us. You know, the beginning of Genesis chapter 22, verse 1, the Bible says, and God did test. Now, the King James used the word tempt, but that's a poor translation because the Bible clearly says God does not tempt anyone. He tests us to prove us, to bring the best out of us. The devil tempts us to bring the worst out of us. So we know what God did in Genesis chapter 22. He challenged Abraham to offer his only son Isaac up as a burnt offering. Now, you know that was troubling right there. I would have been binding the devil every chance. I had, but this was just God's way of testing Abraham to prove that Abraham was absolutely loyal to God. And even though he now had his promised child that he had waited on for more than 25 years, God wanted to make sure that Abraham was not going to put Isaac before him. And the Bible says in verse seven, now Abraham and Isaac, they, they're on their way up to Mount Moriah. They go into the place of sacrifice where a, where God told Abraham, I'll show you the mountain where I want you to offer him up as a sacrifice. And the Bible says they went three days journey. Man, if you can't see the gospel in this, you got to be blind. Three days journey. That represents the death, the burial, and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. When you look at the Old Testament scriptures, you can see the shadows and the types of everything pointing towards the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Verse 7 and of, of Genesis 22. And Isaac spoke unto Abraham his father and said, My father? And he said, Here am I, my son. And he said, Behold, I see the fire and the wood. But where's the lamb for a burnt offering? Now I want you to see the prophetic words of Abraham in verse 8. And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together. Now notice what Abraham said. Abraham said, God will provide himself a lamb. 
I want you to see this now. We, we, we're going to come back and see the fulfillment of that exact wording in the New Testament. Let's go to verse 9. Verse 9 said, And they came to the place which God had told him of. I would have been binding the devil every step. I don't know about you. I know some of you, some of you a little deeper than I am. I would have been binding and rebuking the whole time up to that, carrying my son up to that altar. And Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac, his son, and laid him on the altar and upon the wood. You talk about some raw obedience. You know, the Bible says when Abraham was doing all of this stuff, the Bible says Abraham believed that God was able even to raise Isaac back from the dead. That's faith in action, man. That this, this man was in playing faith. That's why Abraham is called the father of faith. He does stuff that almost troubles you sometimes. His faith, his faith in God was was absolutely real and when you walk by faith people will think your screws are loose they would think you have lost your mind but it's simple raw obedience and dedication to the things of God because you know the Bible says you will have no other gods before me God was just putting him to the test and Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood. That's that you can see the, the crucifixion of Christ. They laid him on top of the wooden cross and they nailed him. My God, my God. And Abraham stretched forth his hands and took the knife. And when he was about to begin to slay his son, the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven, I feel the Holy Ghost, and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here I am. And he said, Lay not your hand upon the, the lad, the young man, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know, my God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Now I know that you fear God seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son. It's the son of promise. He had two sons. He had Ishmael, but there was only one son of the promise. God said, now I know that you fear me because you were not willing to withhold the most dearest and precious thing to you. Let me read that verse 12 again. And he said, lay not your hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him a ram was caught by his horn in a thicket, tangled up in the bush. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the place of his son. I believe as Abraham walked up one side of the mountain, every step he took, the ram stepped. Every time Abraham and Isaac stepped closer to the top, that ram was coming up the other side of the mountain. And when he reached the place of sacrifice and was about to slay him, the angel said, don't do it, Abraham. And Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh, meaning God will provide. But I want you to remember now, Abraham told Isaac in verse 9 and verse 8, God will provide himself a lamb. But we see God provided a ram here. But Abraham's prophetic words were fulfilled in John chapter 1 verse 29 and 36. When John the Baptist saw Jesus coming to him to the river Jordan to be baptized by John, John the Baptist said, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. My God, Abraham's prophetic utterance, his declaration came to pass when John saw Jesus coming and said, Behold, the Lamb of God, the ultimate sacrifice. For God so loved the world, I surrender all. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Listen, if you're a sinner, if you're not a child of God, if you've not made things right with God, now is the time. The Bible says, 
Today is the day of salvation. Today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. He loves you. Pray this prayer. Lord Jesus, I believe you are the Son of God. I believe you died on Calvary Cross that I might receive forgiveness of sins. You shed your blood for me. You died for me. But God raised you from the dead on the third day. Jesus, wash me in your blood. Save my soul. From this day, I turn my back on this world, the flesh, and the devil to serve the true and living God. Thank you, God, for forgiving me of all of my sins and washing me in your blood. Your sins have been forgiven. And if you prayed that prayer and meant it with your whole heart, let me and my lovely wife be the first to say to you, welcome into the kingdom of God. I want you to type below this video right now. I've just surrendered my life to Jesus. I've just surrendered my life to Jesus. The greatest joy is when we look under these videos and see people saying, I've given my life to Jesus. I've surrendered. We love hearing other comments as well. That your life is being changed by the word of God. You are drawn closer to Jesus. That's what it's all about, my friend. It's about Christ and him crucified. You know we love you and we appreciate you greatly. Listen, I want to give you an opportunity right now to sow a seed into the ministry. You can visit us online right now at seanpinder.net forward slash give. seanpinder.net forward slash give. You can also give through the ministry PayPal account. That address is paypal.me forward slash Sean Pinder Ministries. Paypal.me forward slash Sean Pinder Ministries. You can also mail your donations into the ministry. Just remember to make your checks and money orders out to Sean Pinder Ministries, P.O. Box 2726, McKinney, Texas, 75070. P.O. Box 2726, McKinney, Texas, 75070. Me and my lovely wife, Pastor Amy, we appreciate everything you are doing to stand with us in supporting the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. The most important message on the face of this earth is that Jesus died and he rose again. He was sent to forgive sinners of their sins and put them back in the right standing with God. We love every last one of you. God bless you. And remember to join us again on tomorrow morning for another morning prayer broadcast. God bless you. We love you. Take care now. Bye-bye.